Hello everybody, this is Dave Savage and I'm walking you through a mortgage coach training talking about how you can really deliver the ultimate borrower and realtor experience. Uh, so again, my name is Dave Savage and here at Mortgage Coach we're always dedicated to your success both personally and professionally and I'm always bringing in special guests to create content and training to help you be more successful. So today I've got Coach Mike White. Uh, Mike, welcome to the call. Thanks Dave, great to be here. Yeah, well, it's great to have you here. Uh, that that site meeting that I was with you at recently where you were delivering some training to a group of fairway loan officers was just exceptional. It inspired this call. So what I want to do is I want to create this video to help you as mortgage coach members be more effective from your first call to the closing of the loan. So we're going to really audit what Mike has is 15 steps and 15, excuse me, 12 steps and 15 milestones to a great closing from the time you first talk to someone till the time that you close. So at Mortgage Coach, we're really passionate about this you know, equation. This success equals value and value equals success. So this is just something that we teach, we believe, and we, we build automation to help you guys do a better job of this. So when you really think about the number of man hours that loan officers spend on a loan from the time that they have a first conversation till the time that it closes, it's a lot. And so uh, when, when I was listening to Mike teach, he talked about how new loan officers will often spend close to eight, eight, eight hours, and the more efficient and the more effective they get, they'll drive that down. And, and again, I've, Mike, since hearing you do this presentation, I've asked a lot of really pro teams. And so far, I've had people tell me anywhere from three hours is it's the fastest. And I actually challenged them. I said, well, hey, and have you really added that up lately? I'm not buying that it's only three hours. And then I've had people that say, hey, I'm in a jumbo market, and it takes us 10 hours. And then I've, I've even talked to a couple of your customers who said it's, it's seven, seven hours and 45 minutes who really know it. So I, I think it varies from platform to platform. But, Mike, let's walk everybody through your process. And if you could just put your color around this to start things off, how, how long do you think it takes most platforms? Well, Dave, to be honest with you, that becomes – the whole topic of conversation is the fact that do you even know? Do you have any idea for real? And, and that requires two things to happen. Number one, you'd have to define your process as exactly what it is that you do. And then you'd actually have to monitor how long it took you. And so my point is with this is this is a learning piece. If, if you're trying to build a business, and often we talk about, you know, how much business can I do before I'm going to need an assistant? And then what does my assistant do? And how long does that take? And all these things that happen in our industry, the reality comes back to is if, if you don't sit down and you don't write it out, and if you don't really know how long these things take, then, then how do you know what you're capable of? And how do you know what's taking you too long? How do you know what skills you need to perfect? And for those people who are doing this in three hours or think they're doing it in three hours, and that may very well be true, but the point remains is what are you doing? So today what I wanted to share and what you saw me share when you were at the presentation is just to lay out some boundaries, to lay out some things and some suggestions and say this is a guideline. Here's, here's what I think needs to be covered, and here's how long the people who do this regularly, this is how long it takes them, and this is how long it should take you once you learn, and we can argue about some of these things, but the reality of it is until you lay it out and until you know how long it should take, how do you know for yourself, gee, I'm working 10 hours on a file. Well, if you're working 10 hours on all your files, there's probably some things in there that we can help you with. Hey, Mike, you cut out. You I or teach you to do that will help you better. All right, guys. So, so here's what we're going to do. I really want to design this so that it's less than a 30-minute call. Uh, so this recording that you're listening to should be less than 30 minutes or very close to it. We're going to talk about from, you know, it takes five hours to go from call to closing. And there's 12 steps and 15 milestones. So I really also want to make this so that this is active. As you're on this call, you're writing things down. And, and by the way, your, your steps might be different. So these are Mike's steps and, and him and I collaborating together because we have a lot of mutual customers that are mortgage coach members. These are, these are 12 steps that make sense to me, that make sense to Mike, and, and he's coached a whole lot of people. So 
uh, we want you to, one, write down your steps. Again, we're not going to audit the steps of details because the milestones fit within the steps. And I really think the milestones are more important. But it's important that you write these down. So actively listen. As we go milestone to milestone, write down how much time is it taking you right now on average. So again, you could pause the call right now because you're probably listening to this as a video. And you, can, you could write these down. And I, I, I think from a learning perspective, if you're, uh, you've got a team and you're a team leader and you're on this call, Make sure everybody on your team pauses right now and write down, you know, do you align with these steps of the process and how much time do you think you're spending? So now for the rest of the call, we're really going to focus in detail on the milestones. You know, what are milestones that Mike has? What are the, what are the key steps within these milestones? And I hope, again, you're going to actively listen. You're going to take notes as you go. Put it on pause if you need to write some notes or if you or with, you're with your team and you're going through this. My hope is by the time we get done going through this, everybody's going to know how long you spend on average. Everybody's going to be more intentional on doing the right things at the right step. And everybody who's a mortgage coach member, you're going to make sure that delivering a total cost analysis and a video is part of your perfect process. So, Mike, let's take it from client intake. Uh, you know, what are the key steps from your perspective and what is your commentary at this point? Well, Dave, I think, you know, the first, the client intake is, again, we, we don't spend too much time going into too much detail because we really can't. So the, the first part about this is making sure that we're asking great questions of the people who are applying for the loan and then actively listen to the responses. It will tell you a lot about them. And then after you've got to listen to their story a little bit, Get them to go and fill out that application online. Or at the very least, if you have to, walk them through the online application. You fill out your own application online. Many loan officers fill it out on a separate piece of paper and then have to go and enter it into their system anyway. So the client intake, I have it no more than, than 10 or 15 minutes. We ask great questions. We listen to what it is that their goals are and we direct them to fill out the application online. Beautiful. And how long do you think this takes on average for great loan officers? How much time are we talking about here? It, 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 until you get the information from them, nothing more than 10 or 15 minutes because at this point you're going to have to pull credit and you're going to have to review documentation to even see if there's a deal here. So got again, it. This is preliminary. We just want to listen. We want to ask some questions. We want to listen to what they're trying to accomplish but we've got to get them to fill out the application and get us some documentation so we can see if there's worth even any more time spent with these people. Got it. All right, guys. And I want to remind everybody, I'm going to be interviewing Jeremy Forcier on scripting tomorrow, Tuesday coaching call. Uh, it'll be titled, you know, Jeremy Forcier's scripts, mortgage coach scripts. So if you're listening to this and you want to hear some scripting around different parts of this process, Jeremy will be on that call. And we'll even be talking about what if they – what if they won't give you the app and they, you know, you've got to do some mortgage options, you've got to quote some rates, you know, what do you got to, what if you got to give a little to get a little here, we'll be getting into that in more detail tomorrow. But for now, let's take it with a, a discovery call, you know, a 15 minute discovery call. And then that leads to, you know, this step of the process and this milestone. Mike? Yeah, re requesting the documentation. Don't limit yourself. Ask in detail. Specifically, the things you're going to need, W-2s, pay stubs, tax returns, bank statements. Make sure that you've asked them for that. It would be great if you gave them a deadline as to when they're going to give that back to you. And follow up with an email confirming what you just told them. In fact, never have a conversation with a client in this process without following up, either without an email or a video or both, letting them know exactly what it is that you need from them and most importantly, when they're going to get it back to you. Got it. So follow up with the email, ask in detail. Uh, details do matter. Next milestone, review docs. Yeah, when we're getting the documentation back, please just don't throw them in the file or upload them into your system. Check the math. Make sure that everything that they sent you coincides with what it is that they talked to you about or what they filled out on the online application or matches the discussion. Because if the numbers don't match, 
and you throw it into the system, you're going to have nothing but trouble later. This is the time to spend a few minutes making sure the math behind the paperwork works because you want to catch these problems now at the very beginning of the file, not the day before you're looking for an loan approval. Got it. And now for a step that's very near and dear to my heart, uh, prepare options and video. Yeah, I mean, this is sort of what the big picture is. I mean, once you've gotten the details from the customer from the intake call, once you review the documentation to see how much actually is true based upon what they've told you, do the numbers all match up, do you have a deal here? Now it's your job to work the magic of comparing the loan options. And as Dave said, you create the personal video for the people so that they can see what their options are and why you've selected them. And then at that point, you want to share that information with the team. Now, at that point, it was probably a referral partner or a realtor that may have given you that or a financial planner or an accountant. You want to send that information not only to the customer, but to that referral partner so that they can see that you've done the job. So, so folks, I mean, this is something that you may have had to already provide some mortgage options earlier in the process. You may have had to do that at the first call, you know, depending on whether this is a prequal or not, eight different stages. But I, I have loan officers all the time who are not mortgage coach members. Well, I didn't need to deliver a mortgage coach report to win the loan. And I think what you're going to discover through this 30 minute audit of your current systems, while you may have gotten someone to give you their social security number to go through your process, you may have even put it into escrow. You know, if you do a really good job up front, you know, not only does the whole system, the whole process go smoother, but you win a client for life. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, advocate at this point, whether you needed to have mortgage options and create the video to win the loan or not, this is just part of taking a great app. This is just part of a perfect process. And if you're going to spend five to 10 man hours on a loan, let's make sure we do it right. Let's make sure we do it up front. So mortgage coach loan officers, again, remember, this is something that you may have already started this conversation earlier, but whether you did or didn't, every single client needs to get options in a video. And I'll, I'll touch on this in more detail as we, as we get, uh, as we start to wrap up this, this training. So, so now, um, Mike, Walk us through approve and decline. Okay, we get to the point where you've put forward the scenarios that you know will work, and if they're in agreement with, with the scenarios that you're providing them, now it's the point where you're, you're moving forward. You're either going to issue your pre-approval letter so they can go look. If for whatever reason you don't come to an agreement, there's, there's something that's causing this to be hung up, or maybe they can't get as much money as they'd like, or maybe some of the documentation was fuzzy, this is the point now where you can issue, issue, uh, issue that pre-approval letter to find out what else is necessary so that this transaction can move along. Too many times we leave this thing hanging in limbo and we don't get a commitment as to where this is going. And now it's also really important if for whatever reason something in this process leads you to have to decline this loan or to say no, you have to back out and say, what's the process that I can give them to help? In other words, what's the path toward them buying that home? Maybe you have to say no because in your documentation you saw that there was a bankruptcy or a foreclosure that hasn't waited its time out and you, you need more time. These are things that you can lay out. In fact, I like to tell my clients, don't ever say no, just tell them not yet. And this is a good thing. If you have to decline their immediate request, put them on a path that gets them to where they want to go. Beautiful. Again, everybody, make sure you're, you're taking notes. If your process is different, make sure you make accordant notes and make sure you're writing down how much time, how many man hours are we as a team. Again, I'm not talking about underwriters and docs. I'm talking about the origination. We as a team, or if you don't have a team, me as a loan officer, how much time am I spending in these various stages? We want to help you get clear on how much time you're investing from first call to closing, uh, whether it's four hours, whether it's 10 hours, and heck, if it's even more, let's, let's talk about that and let's understand that so you can get better. So prep submission. 
And, and here is the, here's where the rubber really meets the road and, and where you can either save or cost yourself a lot of time. You really need to be crystal clear in knowing what's required. What does your processing team need from you? Now, we know you're going to have to enter some information into your operating platforms. You know you're going to have to look and review and complete all the disclosures that are going to go out. So that do they match what it was that you were talking to your client about? You've got to schedule the follow-up at that point. If you're sending out those disclosures, you've got to schedule the follow-up to make sure that not only did the client get those disclosures, but they've sent them back along with anything else that you might have needed. And remember, the details really matter in here. The, the things that you casually look at and think may not be important are the things that usually bite you in the butt down the road. Take the time to make sure that when you're making this loan submission, you've got it crystal clear, everybody's on the same page, and you've put a timeline to this to remind yourself to look in one day, two days, three days, to get those disclosures back, to make sure that everything is here, that those things are happening. Because if your submission isn't complete, you've got to stop somewhere down the road and come back to it and do it right. And after all, why would you want to do that? Get it right the first time. Right on. And now it's time to call the realtors. Yeah, Dave, this is, this is one of the things that loan officers really do, do a great job with. And that's when you get that contract on that purchase. You've probably got two agents involved reaching out and making that phone call to them to introduce yourself. Make sure you discuss the appraisal process. You know, we don't do the appraisals. We're not out even allowed to speak to the appraiser. So speaking to the agent at that point and asking for their help and saying, look, please, if you don't get a phone call from the appraisal management company to set up this appraisal appointment in the next 48 hours, would you please call me back? Have the conversation about the appraisal and say, please, the, the two realtors that you two were involved in negotiating this price, I don't care what the appraiser says, please print out the comparables that the two of you used to negotiate that price and make sure whoever's visiting with that or meeting that appraiser at that property, that you hand that appraisal those comparables so that down the line if there's an issue with value, your point has already been made. And last but not least is to make sure that you're going to provide specific contact information with those agents, both of them, in a compelling way. Make sure that you're letting them know how you're going to communicate with them and when during the process. So again, hope everybody is taking notes. You know, Mike talked about, you know, three calls over the course of the loan, five minutes each. You know, write this down, times two, two agents. So little things like this, loan officers tend to underestimate all the steps, how much time you invest in a loan. And my goal through going through this practice and recording this call is that you guys are all going to come out of this and go, okay, that's how much time I spend in a loan. In fact, uh, this will be posted in our YouTube channel, and there's a little note section, a little comment section underneath. I want if you if you got a takeaway like, wow, I hadn't even thought of that. So this is why this this process, this 30 minute process was valuable. I want to know that. And two, we want to know how much time it did after you went through this 30 minute call with Mike and I, and you audited your process, how long is it taking you? How many man hours are you, if you don't have a team? And if you do have a production assistant, how much time are you spending every loan? We, we want to know how much time you're spending. So uh, status updates. Yeah, you got to make sure that you have built into the system that you've explained to them early how and when you're going to keep in touch with those people. For me, it was always, I would always call people on Thursdays. Thursdays was my follow-up day. I would do a status report with each one of my buyers, each one of my agents involved in a transaction, as well as I would follow up with my pre-approvals. Again, it's three to five minutes once a week. You're going to share the progress of the file, where we are as it relates to the timeline that we set in the very beginning of this file, what the process was going to look like. You're going to answer any questions that they have. And in fact, many times when they know that you're going to call them and you're going to have this status update, 
they won't bother you in between calls because they know you're going to call. And they'll just ask you whatever question that they have when, when you call in. And remember, at this point of the process, as people are engaged, other people around them are starting to realize that they're buying a home. Friends and family members or associates are seeing that they're in this process. It's a great time to make sure that you're consistently asking for those referrals from the people so that they know that part of this process is the fact that you hope to do your job so well that they are comfortable referring your friends and family members to you to do their loans. Wouldn't it be great to have that as one of the prerequisites to say, I will know I did a great job when you refer me a friend or a relative? So uh, I'm just going to jump in. There are certain touch points that if you do them right and you do them proactively, a mortgage coach report with an edge video is one of those, and a quality proactive update with, you know, even if you have no news, it's just to let people know that you have a rhythm, you deliver great service, and you proactively update. These little, these little nuances, you know, make a big Hey, Mike, I just realized I had it on mute, uh, so you missed what I said on the last one. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, no, hey, I got you. Yeah, one, one, I want to make sure we get to teaching, even though I did miss that last cue. Uh, little things make a difference. So when I talked on this last touch point around status updates, not every loan officer does that. It is critical that these proactive updates are consistent. A mortgage coach video at the beginning only takes five minutes makes a big difference on the quality of your service and the quality of your referrals. Status updates, they only take five minutes, but how consistent you are, how proactive you are, makes a big difference on referrals. So approval or more docs, Mike. Yeah, you're, you're gonna submit the file into underwriting and you're either gonna get a uh, clear to close on your loan approval or you're gonna get uh, a request for more documentation or some conditions. This is when you're gonna pick up the phone you're going to speak to the client. You're going to email the client. Either the loan has been approved or the docs that I'm going to need. And again, be very specific on when they're going to get you this information back if you have additional commit conditions. Remember at this point that these times here, the client and the agent, as soon as they hear that you've got an approval or the loan has come out of underwriting, all of a sudden, the urgency for them to react to your request starts to fade because they start coasting. And you can't allow that to happen. And that's why you must agree on a specific time frame for any of the things that you still need so that you can get this deal buttoned up and closed. Resubmit. Now, again, if you had conditions and you have to resubmit, you've got to set the proper expectations. Again, this is where people give up on the file and they stop pushing and things start to drag because in their mind you have explained that the conditions that you need are only minor in nature but we know they're not going to close until we get them so for every day that we're waiting for conditions to show up you have to set that expectation that they could be extending the time it may take for them to close their loan clear to close now, on the clear to close part, this is where you need to share the details with the clients in both agents. Every one of us operates slightly differently from state to state and lender to lender about what those details are. For me, it was always making sure we talked about the money. We always made sure that we knew, you know, that if, if money had to be moved or transferred, how we were going to account for it. Now is also a time to make sure that we had things that we reminded them of, like the insurance for the property, and that they didn't spend more on an insurance policy that we have allowed for in the monthly payment budget. So we have to make sure everybody's prepared, including the agents. Maybe there was some work that had to be fixed at the house. Maybe there were some things that they'd have to do. Maybe that there is a walkthrough that we have to make sure is going to go flawlessly because we don't want to get hung up right at the very end of the game. Review the HUD. Again, 
check the math. Look at that HUD-1. Does it say everything on that HUD-1 that was supposed to say? Did we meet the expectations of the borrower? Did the, the deal that we proposed to that borrower, the deal that we explained to them, do the numbers on the HUD-1 accurately reflect those and maybe they're better? Maybe the down payment is less. Maybe the closing costs are less. Maybe the payment is less. Maybe the rate went down between the time you started this process and by the time that loan got locked where their expectations are less because of, of the calculations of what day of the month they're going to close and maybe they're closing toward the end of the month and they don't have to pay as much per diem. That's when you want to make sure you review those HUD, that HUD one, make sure the numbers are clear. You're going to answer any of the questions that that borrower has and again conf confirm that HUD one review that everything on that HUD-1 was met satisfactorily and do that again with that referral partner to make sure that they know, hey, it's a few days out before closing. We've already reviewed the HUD-1. We're raring to go. And again, this is something that's, you know, these last few steps are, gonna, are going to um, change with the new TILA and the three days that are going to be implemented. So, you know, we're recording this right now in um, – what is it? It's, it's um, October of 2014. Uh, things are going to change, and we're going to have to change our processes up in this area uh, by next year. So confirm wire. You know, one of the things that most LOs never do is to call the title company or the escrow company and confirm receipt of the wire. How great is it? You know, many of the people that I work with, we make sure the wire is confirmed a day before the closing. They actually make sure that the wire is there, received and confirmed a day prior so that they can call both of those agents and let them know, hey, I just wanted to let you know, I already called. The wire is already there. The only thing missing is for everybody to show up, sign, and we're on our way. And the closing. You know, this becomes the thing, again, I know a lot of loan originators don't want to attend the closing. And I strongly encourage everybody to do so. This is the time for you to take your bow. Congratulate the borrowers on their purchase. Thank the other professionals that were involved. Make sure you're taking pictures or videos at the closing. Maybe even grab a video testimonial so that you can post these things on social media, whether it be your Facebook page or their Facebook page or your own website or you can put it on your LinkedIn or your Twitter feed. The reality of this is, this is the time that you take the bow for having done the job that you said that you were going to do. And the post-close call, something everybody does not do, or at least do it in, a, in an awesome way. Well, and I think, you know, it's, when you're at the closing and you find out when they're going to move, you want to make sure that you're calling that buyer to check in and make sure that everything went smoothly. You want to make sure that you get a handwritten note out to the realtors that were involved in that transaction, thanking them for their professional conduct and looking forward to working with them in the future. About a week after you send those thank you notes, you need to just go out there and do a quick drop by for those agents office with a short note, a piece of paper, maybe an article, maybe uh, another uh, mortgage coach presentation on one of their listings, showing them and saying, hey, here's a presentation on a total cost analysis for your property over on 123 Main Street. I'd love to show you how to use this and how to take advantage of this as a marketing tool. And then obviously you want to make sure post-closing that you send out the uh, mortgage coach annual review. So, folks, you know, this is part of a conversation. I'm going to wrap up with some key points, but uh, the best mortgage coach loan officers, they're not only at the front end of the sale doing a mortgage coach, but at the close, they're providing something that's tailored to the client. If the client was interested in paying off their mortgage early, they're providing a closing gift saying, hey, if you paid an extra $100, $200 a month, this is how much quicker you can pay it off. And they're establishing that rhythm to have an annual review with the client. Again, the best of the best, they take a great app. They do the little things. While there's 12 steps, 15 milestones, 
a lot of loan officers, they're not, they're, you know, they're doing the big stuff. Yes, they're having the initial conversation. Maybe they're asking two questions and not really listening and just selling rates and pushing loans. Um, but the best do it right. So every borrower gets a good faith estimate because it's required. We got to do that. Most loan officers provide a transactional fee worksheet to win the loan, to get that to, to the point where the fee, to get that. But a mortgage coach loan officer, they're providing, an, you know, typically it's an email. Sometimes it's printed out. But 70% of the time, it's an email with a link to mortgage options, and they're always providing options. So the borrower, whether they're, they click on that from a mobile device or they click on that from a computer, they get their mortgage options. And they have those mortgage options in their back back pocket. And the other great thing for mortgage coach loan officers so that you're, you're doing this on each and every loan is that now the realtor's in the loop. You send it to the, loan, to, the, to the borrower, you ask their permission to include the realtor, assuming it was referred by a realtor, and now the realtor is always in the loop. And by the way, you can change these options if it was a prequal, so when you originally met them in the realtor's office, and you gave them the link and things changed, they're in the loop. They know what's going on. So let's face it, every borrower has a loan officer because they're borrowing money. Every borrower has a friend or family member that they trust. You know, if they're borrowing money, they're not just doing it by themselves. And if they're buying a home, they have a realtor, right? And, and let's face it, depending on, you know, how they manage their money, they might have an advisor. And here's the deal. Everybody's got friends. They got their buddy at work. They have the genius father-in-law. They have all these people that are in the loop as they're going through the mortgage transaction, whether that's selecting the options, picking the loan officer, and then let's face it, every mortgage transaction has challenges. So it's up to you to solve those problems and how, depending on how you do that, depends on one, win the business, and two, winning the referrals. But if you provided a mortgage coach report at the front end and you used it throughout the process, everybody's in the loop. Everybody knows what the mortgage options are. And if you continue to use mortgage coach and you update the video along the way, everybody stays in the loop. So when you really think of the number of man hours that you're spending that, you know, five to eight man hours, and again, please, in comments, I want to know how many hours are you spending on a report? If you just do that mortgage coach up front, it, it makes the whole process better. It helps you more win, win more business and get more referrals. So here at Mortgage Coach, all you Mortgage Coach members on this call, we, we have scripts for you. You know, I'll have a link in the notes to this YouTube video to a PDF document that has all these scripts. So what to say to the borrower beforehand. What, what is a great video? When you create that Mortgage Coach video, what should you be saying in that video? Here's a checklist for you so you know if you created a great video or not. Uh, when it comes to the call with the realtors, we even give you scripts, and I, like I told you, the call I'm going to be doing with Jeremy Forcier tomorrow is going to have all kinds of scripts on how you can position yourself as a mortgage coach loan officer that, hey, the way I do loans, it's better than the way other loan officers do loans. We even provide you Jeremy's questions, what to ask during the real estate meeting. So at the end of the day, my hope in listening to this 30-minute call, you're going to know how much time you spent. You're going to be more intentional around your steps of the process in the milestones, and you're going to stop doing this. You're going to stop doing fee worksheets, and you're going to start delivering mortgage coach experiences because borrowers want it, realtors want it, and at the end of the day, if you're going to go from being an app taker and really delivering value, you guys need to do this more. Uh, and also, if that, you know, I didn't give you enough reasons, the fact that we're helping you modernize the whole open house experience, where right now most loan officers are providing paper, and, and, and the way they're delivering value to realtors could be a whole lot better with a mortgage coach experience. So all you do is you send a link with mortgage options and now that agent can display those at an open house or out in the field on their own device. So if you're new to mortgage coach or you're a mortgage coach member and you're not doing this with each and every client, you're probably saying to yourself, well, it's hard, I don't know how to do it. And learning is hard. But here's, here's my, my last thoughts for everybody. Don't wish it was easier to do loans, to be a loan officer. Just wish you were better. Because at the end of the day, the best loan officers, they have become this amazing loan officer. Success is something you attract by the person you become. 
And I believe that every mortgage coach loan officer, you have better technology, you have better tools to have a better borrower conversation and to deliver your borrowers with better information and value. So as a mortgage coach member, um, hopefully you've already downloaded our apps in the mobile store. Just go to your app store, Android or iOS, download Mortgage Coach. If you're already using our, our apps to deliver value to borrowers and realtors, let us know what you think. Just give us a review and let us know what you think of our apps. And again, every Tuesday, I'm doing a coaching call around ideas and concepts. Every Thursday, we're training you. And every Friday, we have beginners. So you've accessed this recording with myself and coach Mike White in our YouTube page. Make sure you subscribe to that. And you can watch those videos either at your desktop or you can watch them on your mobile device. Hopefully this was a valuable uh, recording. Hopefully um, we've delivered value. And Coach Mike White, I appreciate you walking us through uh, your perfect process of how to go from call to close. Thanks, Dave. It was a pleasure to do it. Yep. All right, everybody. So uh, always be an expert in the marketplace and always be a mortgage coach. Take care, everybody. Uh, we'll see you on the next coaching call.